Hi guys, welcome back. If you're coming back for a second time, <laughs> good on you as well, because if you made it through that last one, wow. Uh, this is the one that I did yesterday that had um, the $2 pencils for the skin tone. And looking at that now on the screen, that's actually looking pretty damn fine. So what I did was, um, rather than have you sit through all the boring base coats, I did that last night uh, and I made a note of what I've used. So in a moment, I'll just go through what those colors are. And then this video is going to be the sand, the ocean and the sky. And I'm not going to do it with the $2 colors again because, man, that just took too long and I don't have the right colors for that um, or the patience, to be honest. So I'm just going to do this one with the Prismas. Here's one I prepared earlier. And this is the one that I'm going to work on uh, on this video. Um, before I do that, though, I just wanted to show you a couple of the bits and pieces that I'm using as well as the Prismas. So couldn't find this one yesterday. This little guy, it's like a dirty big blob of blue tack, um, a kneadable eraser, pretty cheap comes in handy if you actually want to uh, dull down a large area because you can flatten it out just give it a bit of a dab you can point it and get into really tight places but it doesn't have a lot of strength to it so if you if you uh, molding it into that little point and you want to get into somewhere and and do some pretty serious definition with that rubber it's not going to work because it just sort of wobbles around it is fun to play with though while you're watching TV. Good stress relief. My favourite is still that uh, mechanical rubber. All right, the other thing that I have is, uh, and me being a tight ass again, pencil wraps. These ones uh, I got from eBay for about, oh, I reckon about $4. So I have, oh, it's going to go all blurry when I move things. I did fix some of the settings on the video, so hopefully. It's a little better quality than yesterday, but it's still will blur if I move too fast. This holds about half of my 150 Prismas and pencil wrap because it rolls up nice and neat. Um, <laughs> you can tell here where it's pretty darn filthy that it also has added bonus of really cleaning off your pencils, uh, especially your blender. So you know how your blender picks up all sorts of color. Uh, it rubs off in there really well because this canvas is really textured. So cheats again guys um yeah so i've got a couple of those and <laughs> i have tried to keep the pencils in the order that they go on the prismacolor chart but oh who can really be bothered putting these things back into the exact same place so they're kind of a little mixed up but anyway um really handy storage super cheap on ebay if you're into that kind of thing um the other thing too which i was using yesterday and didn't mention is you've probably seen the uh, pencil extenders this i got on ebay for a dollar so obviously it's awesome because hey it's purple but this is for when your pencils get too tiny there's my blender um here's the original length of a pencil and that's that's what's left of my little blender at the moment it just barely fits inside my sharpener so as soon as I can't fit it in there to sharpen anymore is the end of him right now though I can still get a little bit out of that uh, just pop it in there and try and remember which way that turns there we go so that extends obviously pencil extender extends the length extends the life for a dollar seriously to get that much out of your out of your prismas or any of your pencils that fit in there um i can't tell you what size that is actually it's just like i don't know big enough to shove a, a prisma into um the other thing that i'm using today is um the big mother of a posco posco oh geez now i had costco on my brain um posca it's a little bit like a a little bit like a white out pen uh, it has a pen like a felt tip on it um, and you, you you press it in and out to uh, recharge the ink I do have a feeling mine's on the way out because it's not coming out like it should but anyway these things are a little bit awesome um, and I don't use this big one very often but when I'm doing water 
which I am doing in the background today, that's the one I use. There's also the little skinny one, which has a completely different nib on it. Um, that's amazing for highlights and stuff. Now, I don't know what they cost anywhere else, but here they're about $5 each, um, which is really not too bad, but uh, shop around for them because I think they vary by quite a few dollars in different places. I picked these ones up at Officeworks um, for about $5 each. And I think, oh no, no, wait, one more thing, this thing, oh my goodness. Okay, this is like one of the awesomest things, that's totally a word, this is one of the awesomest things that I've bought in a long time. It's a Statler Lumicolor. It's kind of like just an oil pastel in a pencil and it's really good for going over the top of your finished work highlighting bigger areas where you don't want um you don't want really the defined lines that these give you although you can blur these a little bit this is my new best friend i love this little guy um <clears throat> they actually come in all different colors too i bought a black but to be honest i haven't used anything but the white one so this little guy comes in handy for all sorts of things. I'm going to use this on the sand. I'm going to use a bit in the water and a little bit in the background. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I, if I've stuffed up the hair with the pencils, I like to go back with this and add a few highlights into hair. So this little guy, what is he, about $2 something? Well worth the investment in a few of those. Uh, really good for cheats and lazy ways of adding highlights. Okay. Um, all right, so back to this one. So this is the one that I did last night, like I said, with the $2 pencils, the yellow and the pink for the skin, which, look, to be honest, looking at it here in, in front of me on the paper, I can see that it's not the greatest, but uh, it actually, on the screen over there, really, really doesn't look too bad at all, especially her face where, um, I don't know if you remember, but we rubbed it back yesterday with my favorite little buddy this rubber um, that came up really really well actually I'm pretty happy with that anyway so if you want to grab a pen and make a note of these colors that I've used um, I've base coated base coated it's probably a painting word isn't it but let's use it anyhow so I've put a base color down for each of the areas here so um, for the sky that is uh, light cerulean blue which is 904. Um, the base color for the water there is light aqua 992. And for the sand, uh, I went with eggshell. And eggshell is 140. Uh, so you can pop in a coat of those things. Now, I've also done her body as well. So I figured let's get all of that done off camera because that's like boring as and no one needs to watch that crap all right now she does look like she's going to be blonde but she's totally not she's going to go have she's going to have actually really orange hair so there's a base coat on there of sunburst yellow which is 917 and that's one of those one of those ones is it yellow is it orange don't know don't care it's going to go on and be my base coat for orange hair um now Every time I do someone with orange hair, I always make sure she has emerald green clothes or a really strong green somewhere around that. Don't know why, but I just really like red hair and emerald green stuff. Um, so her clothes here, the base color I've put on there is light green, and that's 920. And down here on her pants, I sort of want to go with those, you know, those really rich jewel sort of colors and it's kind of a little bit like what jasmine's got on the original there she's got a nice strong blue uh, so the base coat i've got there for the blue is true blue um, 903 and just this little patch of red over here because i'm not a great fan of red but it has its moments um, starting out with scarlet lake 923 so that's going to be just this little bit over here then what I've done is I've decided she's going to be a bit of a badass and she's going to have a black leather. Yeah, I have no idea what that thing's called, but it looks to me like a bit of a corset, but I don't think that's the right word. So anyway, she's going to have a black leather one of those. 
black leather straps there uh, and match that up with a black leather belt. I haven't done anything with the sword or her little flask yet. I'll get to those afterwards. The buckles, yeah, probably they're going to end up being silver. Um, mainly because I just for the life of me can't get the hang of doing gold using the pencils. I know the colours but it never turns out uh, the way that I like. I'm never really happy with that one. So they may be silver, we'll see. And I'll probably end up doing those laces um, in a green to match uh, her shirt. Alrighty, so if you want to um, get all of those base colours in, uh, what I'm going to do first of all is uh, I'm going to do the sand and then I'm going to do the ocean and I'll finish off with the sky. The reason I'm doing the sand and the reason I do the skin first is because um, I'm very heavy handed so when I, when I go back over with the blender or the subsequent layers of colour it tends to bring up little crumbs of, of the, uh, I don't know, I know it's not a lead, it's a wax, but I'm going to call it a lead. Uh, it tends to bring up little crumbs of the lead from the surface of the paper. And if you do the dark colours first and then do the skin last, which, uh, how many mistakes that took me to learn, um, the little crumbs can actually get caught up in your skin colour and, and make them look like, well, like they have some terrible skin disorder. So I like to do the pale colours first. And also because I've gone over them with the blending pencil or I've burnished them with a paler version of the colour, um, they're, they're kind of nice and smooth. So if any dark colours do smudge over them later, they come off really easily with either super rubber or blobby rubber. Uh, okay, so enough rambling. Um, I am actually losing my voice a bit. So school holidays was bound to happen. Um, alrighty let's put that one aside so here's what we're going to do um, again I'm sticking with the three colors so three colors there that we're going to be using for the sand that's uh, eggshell yellow ochre and sandbar brown um, the colors gosh what are their colors that's 140 that one is 942 and this is 1094 um, if you don't have those you're just looking for something that's a pale creamy color or just go really really light with a yellow um, yellow ochre is kind of a it's kind of a brownish yellow so again you could go with a really really pale brown um, like a there's not one in this pack but I remember when I was doing painting there was a tube of raw sienna which was a nice um, Oh, for want of a better word it's like a baby poo brown yeah but it's a really good one anyway it's probably just a shade darker than that so you could go a bit lighter and use that one sandbar brown's a funny one it's um let me see if i've got a scrap here i can show you sandbar brown's kind of a greeny yellowy brown it's not the most attractive color but it comes in really handy uh when you're doing wood and when you're doing the sand so that's the three colors for the sand. For the, what do you call that? For the ocean. That's the color I started with, which was light aqua 992. Um, going to then go over that with 905 aquamarine. And then this little baby is cobalt turquoise 105. And I'm gonna use that. You can see all the darker lines here so i'm going to use that one for the darker lines doesn't don't really need much of this one um, but then i am going to use this awesome little thing um, to add a little bit more highlight to that water so that's the three for the water and then for the sky um, okay so the base color of the sky was light cerulean blue which is this one now in the original of Jasmine's, it's it's looking like a nice sunny day. It is quite cloudy, but um, in the background there. But they're not really strong clouds. They've come out a little darker here than I'd like. So when I go and do the next one with you guys, I'm gonna just lighten up that color that's in the middle of the clouds. That's actually periwinkle. No, that's not it. This one is. 
So this is periwinkle. It's a grayish blue. It's actually kind of reminds me of that Wedgwood blue. It's quite nice. Um, so that's periwinkle 1025 and that's just to add a little bit of darkness to these clouds which is a little bit more darkness than I really wanted because they look like they could potentially rain on her. Um, so I just want to tone those back a little bit. I'll fix that up afterwards though. And also here on the sky I've got a bit of electric blue which is just here in between the clouds just to brighten the sky up a little bit. So I may actually even extend that a little further into the clouds. Now the other thing about these that I kind of don't like a great deal is the fact that you end up with these, they've got, this one's got fairly strong uh, line work in it, which is great on her body, love it there, but I find it kind of, you know, if you wanted to, uh, not realism, because I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go so far as to say it's realistic, but basically I just, I don't like having the black outline around the clouds, and I found that black outline down here around the water a little bit odd in the end colouring as well. So what I've done is I've got Monster Posca and I've used that to to go over the lines and to make so that kind of makes a little bit of that froth here at the um, at the edge of the water and it also lightens up the edge of the clouds there uh, like I said this one I have a feeling that it's kind of almost empty so I'm not getting the best result with it today but enough to just muddle through now what I've done here is because there was not actually any detail in the water I've left it kind of calm and smooth and it's really easy to change the way uh, your water goes. I've done in the in the same jasmine book there's three different pictures that I've done that have got um, oceans in them and in those ones she had a little bit of, don't look at my messy book, um, in those ones she had a little bit more detail in the in the line work there so this one which is the other pirate yeah I got the name wrong yesterday the one we're doing is Molly this one's Polly. Um, this one, yeah, it had the line work there to show you the waves, so it made a really choppy ocean. So you can do that with with you can do that with this one that we're working on. You just need to put in these these lines. So you could just do some crescent shapes that overlap. Remember how you used to draw? Uh, let me get a pencil. Remember when you're a kid and you used to draw hills and they sort of went like that. So you could kind of do a yeah, a rough version of that if you want a choppy ocean. Um, again, this one's done with the same three colours that I'm using uh, on the other one today. And you just make them darker down. See that? See this is like... So that's the crest of a wave. So behind that you've got the deepest, darkest colour and then you just come up here and it's kind of like, you know when you go to the beach on a sunny day and the sun's sort of behind the waves, it shines through there and makes those gorgeous gorgeous turquoise colors so choppy ocean yeah and you just make sure that you come down the waves with a little bit of runoff as well now this one I have to say I don't really like how the waves turned out because my usual lazy ass method of putting on the Posca is to like go over the lines and then smudge it and it smudged really well the other ah, oh, the other thing I did too um, and I'll show you on a couple further in is go over the lines and then color it all in and then go back with the blending pencil and i found when you use the skinny posca over a layer of burnished pencil it scrapes off really well so i thought yeah yeah go right ahead do that with this one but then i went back with my blender to scrape it all off and for some reason the posca's like yeah no nah, i'm just staying here you can't rub me off i'm well and truly stuck to this page and so this one kind of didn't turn out because I'm blaming the Posca not me the other one that I did this is actually the first time I did the ocean um, this one I actually really like this except for here I feel like it's a little bit flat and to me she looks like Brussels sprout leaves uh, yeah that's just me being um, too picky but I do actually like this area over here and for some reason the Posca actually worked there so like I put down a really thick layer and then went back in and chiseled away the bits I didn't want a little bit like uh, sculpting an elephant the background here you can see foreground choppy 
background because it's in the distance is probably just as choppy but you can't really see it because of the distance so you ease off on on the posca ease off on the line work that you put in make it a bit smoother towards the back the last one that i've done in this book with ocean that i was actually relatively happy with um, is this one and again she's the same uh, turquoise and aqua colors as um, as what i use what i'm using today I've used the two different Poscas here. So if you have a look up the back there where it's really skinny white lines, that's this little guy that's like the, I don't know, something millimeter, where is it? Seven millimeter, but that doesn't make sense to me because that's not seven, that's like one. Maybe it's talking about the width of the pen, who knows? Anyway, there you go. So that's the skinny line up the back there. Now this one is really good because if you've burnished that back and when I said burnished I mean like um, so what I did with this was I put all the colors down that I wanted sometimes you go over with the blender and you mush it all up together other times I get like the palest version of that color which is actually possibly this little guy and then just go over the whole thing and it sort of buffs it and polishes it and makes it smooth which is awesome then because when you put the Posca on you can actually, I wonder if you can still do it now. You can chip away at those lines. So, oh, you can look at that. That's been, when did I do that one? 15th of October. So you can still go back, there you go, and chip off those lines a little bit where you don't want them. The big Posca on this one let me do it. Big Posca on the other page would not let me do it. Posca is fickle. Um, so here's another one too where I went over the black lines uh, at the edge of the clouds and I also did on the sun there as well because well just because um, yeah so anyway this is a completely different set of colors for clouds I do have a feeling I may have used French gray on these ones but they were meant to be a little bit more stormy so anyway I just want to show you how the oceans turn out so these if you look at the shapes here you've got little hill shapes you've got some horseshoe shapes there as well and if you're going to make a stormy ocean on on this one just make sure that you uh, you probably just want to add in you know what I'd even trace it there's nothing wrong with tracing Jasmine's a better drawer than me so you could put these lines in and make it really choppy um, I don't know up to you if you do that sort of thing but if you do go in behind them with the darkest aqua and keep it really light at the top helps to give you a bit of definition on it okay so enough of that um that put on away we don't need that anymore scrap paper there i'm so much more organized today so completely organized that i spilled like half a liter of hot tea all over my table thankfully it didn't get on my work but i've got everything i need out today and i've actually put a towel under it so you don't get that horrible um, pencil banging noise all over the damn place like yesterday all right starting off with the sand now in the image if you look at the original which I always have open um, when I'm working on a jasmine picture because it's I can't be asked working out where all the light and the shade goes jasmine's the expert so I'm just gonna do what she did um, this is Deep in the background here, you guys probably noticed. I had no freaking clue what that was meant to be. Uh, yeah, I can't quite tell from the original, so I'm just going to go with it. Maybe it could be like little sand hills or something, and she's actually standing further away from the ocean than I thought. Um, I thought maybe it was like, like a little inlet or something. I don't know. It, anyway. You can do something with that if you can work out what it is. Um, I've tried to add in a little bit of texture in the sand uh, just to make it look like a beach, I guess. It's not many beaches that are really flat. It just has postcard beaches. So this is a beach that's had lady pirates storming all over it, probably dropping treasure and shit in the sand. Who knows? Okay, let's get her out of the way. And get her in okay so I am going to turn this around sideways again because I can't color in the other way all right we've got the three colors for the sand 
that's the what do you call that one again eggshell the sambar brown and the yellow ochre all right the sand, it, this is this is okay if it gets streaky because it's just going to add to the texture of the sand. So I'm just going to go really rough over this and keep it really patchy with the yellow ochre up to the edge of her arm. Don't worry too much if it goes over the lines because yesterday that was one that we went over with the blender so it's all nice and burnished. We'll be able to rub it off relatively easily. All over here with that. Okay, so putting that putting that light colour underneath just means that you've got a base of sand under this yellow. We don't want too much. Now these lines that she's got some line work on here, and I for the life of me could not work that out either. But I have decided that those are going to be just ridges in the sand, which is probably what she intended anyway. Um, but they're kind of not in the. If you look at the original, they're kind of really not there. These ones are. A touch these ones are not so just going to turn those into ridges in the sand like I said it's probably what Jasmine intended anyway all right because those are ridges then they're going to cast a little bit of a shadow so this is oh look how messy that is uh, this is where sandbar brown's going to come in and we're just going to go behind each of these with again with that flat edge so look around the tips of your I know you can't see that because it's really tiny and I've turned off the light today too uh, you're looking for that flat tip there so that you don't get scratchy lines so just turn your pencil around until you can feel it hitting that flat part all right so we're just going to put a little bit of a shadow with the sandbar brown behind each of those lines and again this is like I said yesterday it's just kind of tickling across the page you don't want to put pressure on it you just want to let the pencil do it so you're basically just directing the pencil you could probably apply just a touch more pressure as you get towards that line all right so yeah that'll do okay and a little bit on this one and just extend them out past that line but make sure you don't do it in straight lines you know, give it a little bit of a curve because it's sand it's been kicked up all right all the way up here I'm just going to go above those lines with the sandbar brown and as you as you move your pencil upwards um, just reduce the pressure so that you don't end up with those lines again and if you do a little bit of diagonal doesn't hurt a little bit of circular and I'm happy with that but if you for example, won't you could just pop back with your rubber and just soften that edge off a bit. Alrighty. So in those lines. Check it on the screen. Gosh, I love looking at stuff on the screen. It's so quiet out here today. The kids next door haven't woken up yet because the little darlings we're up until just after midnight playing Harry Potter games and trying to conjure a Patronus. Man, I wish I'd had a uh, a wand because straight off my balcony I could see the little children screaming and yelling until just after midnight out their window. Pretty sure that after all of that they did not get a Patronus. Okay. Um, I'm doing this kind of sideways so I just want to check yes go above those lines to create little shadows extend them out a little bit because um, I don't know just because I don't know if you can hear in the background one of my neighbours is playing this music that is just Oh boy, I have no idea what it is, but it's monotonous and it's... Oh no, I shouldn't say that, that's really rude. Um, it's just this really repetitive folk music. And you can't do anything about it because you can't... Anyway, they're on the other side of the wall. Can't turn it off. And I don't want to put my music on because... 
Um, well, there's a whole copyright thing, which really, I'm sitting here colouring in a photocopy. I probably shouldn't be worried about the photocopy um, copyright rules. Okay, uh, so we've got all of those in. So what we're going to do now is also look for look for the flattest part of your pencil again so it's probably on mine as I'd say it's still the tip yeah and I'm just gonna go really softly again not putting any pressure but just letting that pencil drag across um, I don't know what it's called with a pencil but back when I used to do folk art in the 90s when <laughs> when everything in my house that was standing still was covered in folk art flowers uh, it used to be called scumbling on the background and it's where you do it's where you do kind of a crisscross shape I guess it's not a zigzag because it kind of overlaps in really wide crosses I use this for trees so when I do a tree um, so that's a tree oh gosh you can see all the background through that why did that come out looking like that Oh, because it's over here. So if I was doing a tree trunk, it's just lots of scribbly crisscrosses and then different layers of brown and taper it off towards the right-hand side. It's a really easy way of getting a rough tree bark. Um, so on here, I'm just going to do that, but much lighter and much smaller strokes just to give you... A little bit of texture in the sand because it's going to have footprints it's going to have like I don't know little bits of driftwood and bits of bark and crap that's all washed up on the beach I'm assuming you know there's always those postcard tropical islands where the beach is perfectly white and smooth and nothing's washed up on the tide and been left on the high tide line but yeah there we go I don't like this one down here it's turned out a bit circular so I just that's better. Um, all right, so this is just the sandbar brown. Just go through and put random, really light uh, bits of stuff everywhere. Okay, that's yeah, maybe just a little bit. Just extend these a little bit up there because they look a bit short. They don't make sense. Meh, they're not going to make sense anyway. All right. A little bit there okay all right so what I'm going to do then is a little bit more I'm just looking back at my original I'm just going to go back and okay so you've got say that's let's the, there's a little ridge there right so it's like a little hill of sand just here so you've got the shadow behind it which helps to define the fact that this is actually sticking up and, and round it out um, I'm just going to go at the edge of that shadow and add a little bit more and I'm going to use that same crisscross because it gives you the nice um, it helps you blend it in a bit and gives you a nice rough rough texture there so just a little bit more yellow where it's coming out of those shadows because what we want I guess if you've got the darker color in the shadows you want the lightest color on the other side of that so around here is where I'm going to go with either my little buddy the luma color or one of my poscas and just add a little bit of white to those ridges I think I'll use the yeah I'll use the luma color because I used the posca on the um, the sample one that I did earlier and it, I don't really like it it turned out a bit liney a little bit too solid so I'm just doing that again, just doing that same crisscross kind of motion. You can see that it's kind of just going like this. Um, but I'm looking for the flattest part of my pencil. Keep turning it around until you can feel the flat part because I, don't know if you, I hope you can see on here, if I colour like that, you can see how fuzzy that is. But if I go to the sharper edge, yeah, you see you're going to get the lines. You don't want lines. You want fuzz. Fuzz is the technical word. Um, I am full of technical words. You guys are going to learn so much. And I apologise in advance. Okay. A little bit 
I'm just going to go wherever I did those little scuff marks with the sandbar. I'm just going to go sort of around them a little bit with the yellow ochre. Um, and again, if you don't have yellow ochre, you could just go like, mm, you could use like a really pale yellow with a little bit of brown over it, I guess. Um, I know Prisma makes a colour called sand. Don't ask me why I'm using eggshell instead. I don't know. I'm not even sure where my sand pencil is because being the lazy cow that I am, I didn't even put it back in the right place when I finished with it. So it could be in the middle of the greens. Who knows? All right. What do you reckon? Yeah. Probably I'm going to just a little bit more in there and I might just go going to be careful because like being a little bit lazy I tend not to go all the way up to the lines and then she ends up with this like white halo kind of thing going on around her so I'm just going to make sure that the colour goes up to the lines and then just add a little bit more pressure just to add the texture to the sand coming out from her I think I've done it over here too look there we go yeah, and maybe just a little bit more up on that part. Don't worry too much here because that line I'm going to go over with the Posca later to get rid of it, um, soften it up a little bit and make a make a little bit of foamy ocean. Obviously she's not parked. She's parked. You don't park your pirate ship, do you? What do you do with it? You anchor it. So she's obviously not going to be anchored on a beach with lots of waves. I'm making a lot of assumptions about pirates here, I really don't know. So I've decided that this is a nice calm beach with just that nice little foamy edge on it. Uh, with that, and a, and a really bright sort of turquoise um, with the sun shining through it. One of those beaches that people go for a holiday where I can't afford. So I draw pictures of it. Okay, what do we think? I reckon that'll do. Okay. The next bit then, I'll get rid of those sand colours. The next bit I would probably do is get this beautiful, oh I love this pencil so much, I'm so glad I found it. Um, this is the Luma colour, like I said it's a bit like an oil pastel in a pencil. So I'm just going to go, see it's a bit funny, sometimes it actually lays down a really nice white, other times it kind of blends into the background so I guess it depends on what the pigments are like in the pencils you used underneath but this time it sort of seems to be blending a little bit so I may go back with a Posca and lighten up so what I'm doing those lines before are where I colored in sandbar brown on top um, I'm actually going to go underneath with the Luma color but you know what here's me rushing ahead idiot uh, I haven't blended it so you could what you could do here is to go back with the sand the original sand color and which is eggshell uh, and burnish that with this or you could do it with the blending pencil I have it I might do a little bit of both and see what happens so over here I like to get into the dark bit first and, and pull it out and it just sort of smooths it off into the other area. I can't believe I forgot that and went straight to the Luma colour. It's because I love that Luma colour so much. So into the sandbar bits. And the same way that I applied the sandbar, a little crisscross pattern with the blender just to really mush that crap into the page there. Ah, oh, look at that. All right. The rest of it, you can just be really rough. Because <clears throat> be aware too that this little blendy pencil, it's great for finishing off with, but it does strengthen the colours. And I find it the most difficult when I'm using the, the black over here. Because some parts of black, if you want like, if you wanted it to be really shiny and have that that white shine on, on uh, the parts that are sticking out I guess um, this will actually darken that black so you've got to go really lightly with uh, in this area I know some people like to leave um, the area completely white but hey I'm 
said it before, say it again. I'm a little bit lazy and I just can't be bothered doing that. I'd rather go back later on with a rubber or something and fix it up. I guess one day when I'm feeling a bit more patient, I'll probably do things properly. Okay, so there's some sand, a little bit of scribble all over. That side, blending pencil. This side, let's see what happens when we burnish with the... Oh, look at that, it's changing the colour. Now it's not gonna, it's not gonna, oh, this might be a good way to do it then. It's not gonna cover here where I already went over with that Lumicolor because the Lumicolor is really thick wax. Uh, so let's just do both sides in different ways and see what happens. I'm gonna leave some little areas white. So I'm using that crisscross as I go as well. It's gonna leave some areas white, which is gonna help with the definition. Um, and look at this, just looking on the screen now, you can see, you can see a fairly solid white line there where that Luma color ends. Um, we can attack that with the blending pencil in a little while and I'll show you what happens with that. Oh yeah, look at that, went out of the lines again. Awesome. All right, leaving bits white and scrappy because highlights just scribbling really and because it, it's kind of burnishing and blending it doesn't really matter which bit of the pencil ah there's some luma color again doesn't really matter which part of the pencil tip you're using here okay all right now that's left a line where the luma color was so just cleaning off that blending pencil a little bit if you find, okay, so the blending pencil, let's see if you can see this. The blender has like a, a, a flat edge where I've been coloring. So what I want to do is actually scrape away some of that Luma color. So I'm going to find the sharpest part of the blending pencil and just go back in there. And I don't know if you can actually, no, you probably can't see that, but there's little crumbs of Luma color coming up. And so I'm just sort of going in really scratchy and you can see now that that's removed most of the line where the luma color meets the sand not a lot of it because it's being a pain in the butt but anyway let's get rid of that bit there and i think we need to get right through there separate that that's better and just a little bit here chisel away a little bit of that now the one drawback with the luma color is that you can't really go back over it with another colored pencil to tone it down because it pencil doesn't stick so well and it does end up getting a little bit gluggy it, it, it kind of like the wax sort of binds together in little balls it's a little bit like when you when your shirts get old and they get peeling you know those little balls that you've got to shave off <laughs> that didn't sound right okay let's stop there with those colors and I'm just gonna go luma coloring a little bit but I'm gonna rough up the edges a bit just on the opposite side of each of those lines where I went with the sandbar brown because that's going to where's that line there that's there we go it's going to give the highlights to make the ridges in the sand so you can see the difference there and a little bit down here a little bit there and I think one more there and we might be done I might just See, there's that little shadow of sandbar there. So if I just go in front of that a little bit just to highlight the indentations. So the shadow is going to be behind a lumpy, blobby bit of sand. Whoa, I'm not sure about that. I might just chip away. Where is this shadow going to be here? So there's a little bit too much white on that line there and just there, so just chip that away a bit. Okay, now again with the blender I'm just going to go off and just sort of smooth off the edges here a little bit. Alright, what do you reckon? Okay, let's say the sand is done. Now I'll just quickly show you though, if I was going to use the... Uh, all those colors out of the way um, if I was going to use the Posca I'm just going to do a little bit because 
I'm not going to use the Posca, but if I was going to use the Posca for the sand, you can still see the black lines through there, which I'm not a great fan of sometimes. So I like to dab a little bit, just in little dots. I don't want to draw with it because it drags really bad. But then, while it's wet, just smudge it backwards a little bit. How's that? Yeah, it's still a bit yuck on the lines. Um, it doesn't stay wet for very long, so if you're going to work with it, you've got to work with it fairly quickly. I do like to put it down and then just sort of get my fingers in and get all dirty and messy and blend it that way. So you can see the difference. That's the Posca. That's the Luma colour. This side has... Um, this side was blended with the blending pencil. That side was blended with the lightest shade. So even, even actually looking at the original here, I can't see the difference in those sides. I don't like that Posca though. That, that turned out a little bit rubbish, didn't it? I'm just going to scrape it off. Okay. Alright, so sand is done. Okay, on to the, um, the ocean. Now the ocean already has um, a coat of light aqua and it's going to get another coat of aquamarine. And it's going to start at the horizon and be darker and it's going to get lighter and lighter as it comes towards here. Now, I'll show you this one again. So here's the one I did before. So that's got the same coat of the light aqua. And then I went back with the aquamarine, coloured all of that. Um, I actually went a little bit darker here than what I wanted to because, I don't know, just because I pressed too hard. Uh, so I'm actually, I'm going to lighten that off because I really do like it when the... Like I showed you on that one before, let me see if I can get it again. The, the, here. I really do like it when the sunlight gets through those tips of the waves and it, oh, it gets sideways. Oh, um, when the sunlight gets through the tips of the waves there and it makes it that beautiful um, light aqua. All right, so uh, there we go. Let's get rid of her. Oh, the other thing then is that we're going to go and just put some random lines in with this darker one, which is called Cobalt Turquoise. Um, if you don't have the aqua colours, just go with some blues. Um, pick your three shades of blue, doesn't matter what they are. I'd go with a relatively dark one to do these marks in here. Um, you could even do, oh, don't quote me on this, but you could probably do like a, a really pale blue um, base colour and then go with, go over it. Oh, sorry, what am I talking about? Don't listen to me. You could do like a really pale green base colour and then go over the, the next two layers with some blue would work. Um, yeah, there's always a way around that. The water doesn't have to be that nice tropical aqua colour. It could be a stormy blue. It could even be grey. Or you could just go all out and, I don't know, go like go like Picasso on this and, and get some pink ocean happening. Seriously, if you do that, can you please make sure you tag me in it? I would love to see that. All right onwards and middle color of the aquas aquamarine 905 and starting up here at the horizon and the awesomest thing about this is because it's water it's going to be choppy nobody gives a rats about the lines so you can just work that color in there Still looking for the soft part of the pencil. I wouldn't go with the, I wouldn't go with the sharpest part yet. So you get the, those nice fuzzy lines. Uh, don't worry about streaks in your work because it's water. It needs to be streaky. I'm just going to darken up a little bit there on the horizon. So more pressure um, and release the pressure as you move down. That is the hardest thing to explain to kids uh, is the pressure on the, the pencil. Okay. Uh, yep. Maybe just bring that dark down a little further. And now if you're like me, you're also going to forget all those little random bits of water. So like here in the armpits, those bits I always forget about. They end up looking... Um, 
slightly different to the rest. All right, and I've gone out of the lines onto her elbow because I suck. All right, down here, and just gonna taper that off really lightly around her arm, watch out for her hair. That works. Now, okay, so I've gone really scratchy with that, and you can actually see that's, that's creating the texture that you need in the water anyway, without even having to go back with some detail. Um, which we're going to do anyway just because but back in here into our armpit try and match the try and match the pressure so that it blends in it doesn't look like an add-on so I'm just going to need to see yeah look on the paper I can't tell but on the screen you can see that outside of her arm there is much paler because I haven't gone right up to the edge I'm too worried about going over the lines Somebody, somebody looking for me. Okay, yeah, that works. All right. Um, actually, because because of this this little bit here, I'm just going to bring the darker colour down a little bit further, but not a great deal. So. The darkness sort of gives you the depth in the water as well. All right. Ah, so I actually went up on the tip there. That's come out really dark. Into the pits. Okay. And over this side. I um <laughs> I stopped talking because I was trying to read a message on my iPad at the same time and I can't multitask apparently. Okay. I'm really loving how that's turned out on the screen. That's looking um yeah, that texture's coming up really good. Maybe I should just colour in on a screen. I'd love to have a go of digital colouring, but I don't know. I don't know how to go about it, and I love pencils so much. If anyone's had a go of digital colouring, tell me how it went. What do you use? I've got Procreate on my iPad, but um, I don't know how to use that. And my son offered me a tablet, uh, a Wacom tablet, Wacom, I don't know how you say it, but a tablet of some sort. But again, no freaking clue how to use it. The digital colouring doesn't seem to go down well in the colouring groups, does it? It's a shame because it's just as hard as pencil work, I imagine. Now, I've just gone out of the freaking lines again all over her arm. But look at Super Rubber go. Look at that. There he goes. All off. All right. And the cleaner's out there now, so I assume you can hear the vacuum cleaner out in the stairwell all right uh, we've got the middle color on so now we're going in with the cobalt turquoise and this little fella's job is to create all of these lines here that give you the choppy water now the bigger you make them the more you have them the deeper the waves uh, are going to be you want to have them relatively thin and probably a bit longer towards the horizon but then when you come down here you want more space between them and uh, you want to sort of taper them off so there's not so many here because you you you, you are close up to the water here it's going to be a lot smoother not quite as choppy the way uh, where's my scrap paper gone maybe that was it no wait wait for it how do I seriously I've got like a square foot in front of me how on earth do I lose things not quite the same sort of stroke that I was using for the sand um, but this one is is sort of unstructured so it's just a it's like a back and forth 
Oh yeah, look at that going sideways. Um, trying to work out which way to turn that thing. That way? Oh yeah, got it. Now, I'm doing it with the pointy bit here so that you can see the lines, but it's just a, a choppy sort of emotion. Can even just be some straight lines like that, and it's really random. Um, the way that I described this to my kids was it's like an aeroplane taking off. So, if you imagine this is the runway, the aeroplane comes in, touches down, takes off again. So, you're not doing straight lines like that, you're actually coming in and, and mm, it kind of makes it softens the, the end and the beginning of the line. So, just going that sort of motion now. You're going to want to vary the side of the pencil that you use because towards the horizon probably going to want the lines to be a bit thinner so you're going to look for a sharper part of your pencil as you come forward twist it around until you get that my favorite part of the pencil that really soft um, flat edge that gives you the the fluffy lines i'm all about the technical language guys man you're going to learn so much art so much Alrighty, so in here at the horizon, just using those choppy strokes, you're not going to need a lot because it's gone on really well on this one. It's slightly different to my original. Okay. <laughs> so there's, just on the other side of my door here, there's a guy out there in the hall vacuuming the stairwell. Uh, out the other side of me, is someone using a leaf blower and a construction site where they're building I think I just got the letter yesterday something like 115 new apartments so six weeks holiday I hope those guys take a little bit of a break all right so just adding those lines in um, keep it really scratchy keep it really irregular Ah, oh, friggin' hell, all over her hair again. All right, now we're getting down to the bottom. The lines are going to get just a little bit bigger, a little bit softer, a little bit further apart, but try to keep them curved just a touch. Oh, that one's a bit big, isn't it? Oh, well. Just add a few around it. Okay, over here, a little bit. Just keep it really soft there in the light part actually going to even change now because we needed the darker one up there where the color was stronger so now I'm going back to that middle one which was aquamarine and with the aquamarine I can actually find the soft part again Jeez, looking through my glasses at this I still can't see it every time for my glasses all right so just going to make it a little bit choppier because I can I think if I open my door, he'll come in and vacuum for me. Okay. How's that? Yeah, I reckon that's probably going to do it. I might just get the dark one. Yeah, because look up here. I've just missed a spot and it's, it's kind of really pale up against that line. I hate when I go out of the lines. It makes me feel like a kid. Alright. Just gonna make that a little bit choppier out there because there are some clouds. So let's pretend there's wind out there as well that's stirring up the ocean a bit. Alright. Let's leave that. I could go on with that for hours and hours, but there's no need to. That's just me fart assing around. Okay. Now the next thing that I want to do with the ocean here is I want to get rid of that black line along the shore. So Super Posca. Now this guy, like I said, is fairly certain he's running out of ink, but I don't know. Seems to be all right. You just press the nib in and the ink flows down. Looks to be all right on that one. Okay. Going to just go over that. And the thing with this one is because it dries really quickly, you can't press you can't press too hard because it will actually scrape up 
the posca that's partially dried underneath and you'll end up with this goopy big mess of yuck. What I want to do though is just dab it on and cover up that whole line and okay so let me see where can I show you. I don't know if it's showing up on here but I'm doing dots and I don't want to go in dots straight along the line like that because it's going to end up looking a bit weird. So I'm sort of zigzagging. Um, yeah, I'm hitting the line, but I'm also zigzagging a little bit above and below just to mix it up a touch. Go back in there with your finger too, because you don't want polka dots. Unless you do. Alright. That line's gone. Go over this side. And... Same thing again, just go along with the dots, but mix it up. And then, yeah, to be really careful with that, it does pick up, lift off the paper. I want to cover that black line, and I want to do it without it looking like a line. How's that look? Yeah, that works. All right. Now, because we don't actually want that to be a solid line, I'm just going to go back over here a little bit because I can still see the I can still see the line work through there. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is use two fingers. So this Posca like it totally makes your fingers all messy and it doesn't come off real well, it's like like white out. I'm going to um, go above the line as well, but I'm just going to smudge it upwards a little bit so that it blends into that pale turquoise because what we're just trying to do is make a frothy foamy edge of ocean look at that there it goes over here too just a few little dots I'm not making the same mistake I did with that mermaid one was it the mermaid no it was the other pirate where I put the posca on really thick and then the bloody stuff would not rub off okay I'm just go right around her hair there and then dots here Mush that up with your finger. More technical words. I reckon a little bit there probably. Take that right up against the plait there I think because otherwise it's going to turn out really stripy. How's that? Yep. I know on the screen you can't really see those black lines but I can and I don't like them. So I'm just going to go over again. Oh, yeah, that'll do. All right. Next thing I want to do is grab oh, this pencil. It's so wonderful. Seriously, get one if you haven't got one. Just going to go above where I put the Posca and just lighten that up. It also has the bonus of just brightening up that turquoise a tiny, tiny little bit. And you know what I've done? I've done it again. I've, I've not. I've forgotten to put the blender over. No worries. Shall do that in a second. All right. So what this what this little guy does is he's just going to help he's just going to help that posca sort of transition into the water a little bit. All right, now same as the sand, you could do that ocean a couple of different ways. Blender, just going to strengthen the colours, blend what you've got there, mush it into the paper and smooth it out a bit. You could also go over it with. Um, uh, the lightest green that you did it's going to change the color a bit uh, or you could even go over it with a lighter blue I wouldn't go over this one with I don't think I'd go over it with a white because I think that'll turn down the, the this bit too much I would go over the sky with a white however this time I actually didn't I went over it with a blue um, I might do a half half again so oh yeah that means sharpening anyway um, Yep, so I'll do this side with the blender. Which way did we do it before? No, this side. So I'm going to do this side with the blender and I'll have a go with a pencil over there so you can see what the difference is burnishing. So if you haven't been too soft with your darkest of the turquoise, it's going to come out and with the blender. It's still going to show up. Remember to, to clean your blender off every now and then because the, the tip of it, even though it's like a pencil without the pigment in it, it 
it tends to, the colour tends to collect around the tip. So as I go further down here, I want to get the colours pale. That darker colour from up the horizon is going to get into it, just like when I was colouring over here with that octopus yesterday and the, the green came out. Because I was lazy and I did not clean my blender. So you can see how that's actually changing the colour. It's really strengthening it. You can compare the two sides there. <laughs> and there's like this whole yellow thing there where I... Yep, yeah, went out of lines with her hair. Now, again, because the ocean's going to be choppy, don't worry about your strokes. I, you know, was doing it up there, just horizontal strokes because of the, um, the small gap. But in this bigger area, it's going to blend really. It's going to blend much better if you sort of do that crosshatchy, scumbly kind of scribble want a better word oh that's come up a little bit darker than I want there all right so that half did I go in there I think I did uh, that half I did with the blending pencil the other half I'm gonna do with the you know what? I'm not gonna use the lightest one of that I'm gonna try it with let's have a look at this this is a this is light green let me just have a look how that works oh yeah no 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 too green Let's find another green. This one is, can't even read that. What's that called? Gray green light. Oh, that might work. That's almost white. You, oh, look at that. You can't see it. See that? Yeah, very, very light right there. That might be a good one. Let's give that a shot. What can go wrong, huh? Um, I'm going to start with this one down the bottom. So you can see it, it also blends the colours together, it strengthens them up a little bit, probably a little bit more than I wanted down there. Uh, up the top here, mush the crap out of all of that. Just watch that bit. And this is where you're going to end up with that white halo thing, you've got to be careful around the edge. That. Armpit water. Okay, look, there's not a great deal of difference. There is, however, this side where I've used this pale green has got like a film of light color over it, um, whereas this one's more clean. This has just got the turquoise. So what I want to do over here is this pencil. Again, I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit down here. So again, with that cross hatching motion, just to keep it smooth and choppy, I just want to lighten that off a little bit. That's better. That's got it. And there's also a big chunks of it there. That's better. That's lightened it up. It's a little bit messier than I'd like, though, because I don't want the water that choppy. So let me straighten that off a bit. Now, nah, it's going to be choppy and foamy whatever all right a little bit more over here I might be able to do that with the white pencil too but because there's been so many layers now we've burnished it a bit it might not actually I don't think it will stick real well okay all right um, also just going to <laughs> it's hard to find a sharp edge on this pencil because it kind of um, it, it's so soft it just mushes all around but just trying to find a sharp edge. I'm just going to put a few white highlights there as well because if we've got we've got the little shadows of the dips and the troughs in the water, then we probably should have some white bits too. There we go. All right, sand done, ocean done. Okay, so I don't need the greens anymore. Let's get on to the sky, and then I think we're done for the day. Um, all right, so the sky had a base coat of, let me look, at this one, there's the sky. Started out with light cerulean blue, which is 904, I'm so organised, I've got them all right, there it is. Okay, light cerulean blue, 904, that was the base colour for the sky, so it looked like that. Um, over the top of that, I used... Electric blue, 
Did I use electric blue? I thought I used true blue. Hang on. Nope, I used electric blue. So electric blue in here just to make the, the sunny sky behind the clouds. And then to add that darker shadow in the clouds, periwinkle blue, which is uh, 1025. Um, like I said before, that's actually a bit darker than I'd like. So I'm going to do it a little bit lighter this time, but I may also... Instead of going over it with the blender, I may go over it with this um, sky blue light, which might turn it down. I'll just have a little go on here and see what happens. It's probably too much on here, too many layers to actually get that to stick. Yeah, yeah, it's got too many layers. It's too burnished. Did it work? I'm just not doing that one. Let me try another one. This one here. Yeah, not really, huh? Maybe a little. I'll just not be so heavy handed on this one. All right. What we're going to do here, I think, is we'll start with the blah, 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 electric blue. And have a look for, see the bits of the clouds here. So they're going to be out over the sky. So we just get, um, again, find the fluffy bit of your pencil. There's that nice smooth edge. Just going to brighten up that blue sky there. And again, up, let, let up on the pressure as you come away, because now we're working in towards another cloud bank over there. So we're just going to have that sky blue about halfway. How's that go? Yeah, all right, that'll do. So just in front of most of the clouds, um, don't go out too far, because we're going to make some I'm going to thicken those clouds up a bit, make them a bit more dense. All right. Oh, off the page. There we go. And where else? There was another big one somewhere. Um, here. I apologise if this video's sound and uh, image are out of whack again like yesterday's were. I don't know why. I don't know how to fix it. I tried Googling it, but I couldn't find an answer. So if anyone knows, let me know. All right. There we go. So we've got some bright sky there. I'm also going to hmm, probably run this one too. I think don't worry too much about the lines because we're going to posca over those edges of the cloud so just a scribbly back and forth with the soft fluffy side of your pencil around there soften it as you come out and try to make sure see how that's you can see the line work and you can see that that's fairly defined down there so just go back in a circular motion and vary your pressure a little bit so that you can sort of get rid of that you don't want geometric clouds it's like the square boobs yesterday we don't want geometric clouds i will fix that up later with a blender all right around the edge of the cloud there and this little line here in the original it kind of there is very little difference between those two areas um, but we're going to make it have a bit more difference. All right, I got the blue skies there. There's one more. Here it is. I'm quite strong in this one because this is right between those cloud banks. All right, got that. And no more of the bright blue because these clouds down here are too close together. Yep, I think we got that. I might just. That's a bit flat there just try and mm. okay that'll do all right the next thing is we need the where is it periwinkle all right now the periwinkle is going to create the the periwinkle is going to create like the 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 thickness there in the clouds and I'm going to ease back on it a little bit this time so this is going to go you don't want to take it up to the edge 
because you want the edge there to be quite well you want it white basically um, so I might even I'm just going to get super rubber and get yesterday's yellow and green off it poor little guy all right I'm just going to take some of that color off from the inside edge of the clouds um, main reason I'm doing that is because my Posca is not laying down like I want it to at the moment maybe I should just go and buy a new one stop being so bloody lazy all right just inside all of those just taking off a little bit of color and these ones too don't be too careful because we're going to go back over this and mash the living crap out of these colors to get them to blend all right lightens it up a bit okay so now uh this is the periwinkle and the periwinkle uh i don't use it very much and i've just sharpened it so it hasn't got a very nice it's got a really sharp point which i don't want but it does have a slightly flat tip there so really softly again um, almost no pressure at all just let the pencil skim across the paper and lay down just a little bit of color there now you want that to kind of blend into that blue that we put down the the brighter blue that's kind of the sky behind because the clouds are going to be a little bit thinner there these are the bits that the bits we're doing now they're the bits that the pirates are looking at and like oh I don't know is it gonna rain do I put my pirate rain hat on have umbrellas been invented yet okay now ah, it's gonna be too dark that one pressed a little too hard it's a little bit too liney but we can fix that so just skim that across the page get that in there down here near the horizon the clouds are much closer to the horizon at the down here that didn't make sense but basically there's no sky down there it's cloud bank down here just a little 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 bit there into the center of these clouds up against the line on this one because you want to you want to have a definition between the front of this cloud and the back of that cloud just the littlest bits okay I think that's probably I reckon that's probably enough of that and that's a bit darker there than I'd like maybe just extend it up do all right see the difference yeah these ones are actually this is the one I did earlier this morning this is like totally much so much darker this one gives you a bit of definition in the clouds but it's not going to make them all rush to get their pirate pants off the clothesline all right now I'm going to use sky blue light instead of the blending pencil i think i'm gonna see how it goes i'll do it on this side so i'll use i'll do the same thing again blender here and colored pencil on this side so you can see uh the differences um i'm not sure that i want it to oh yeah look at that that's not too bad so you can see how that brings up the color makes it just that little bit brighter now, I'm not going to colour in straight lines again. I'm going to do that whole crisscross business because the clouds, they're messy, they're bumpy. I'll get in there. Okay. How's that? Oh, well, that's completely different, isn't it? All right. I'll just see what happens with the rest of it. I'm not going all the way up to the black lines because I want to put the Posca there to 
to make the edges of those clouds nice and fluffy. Oh, look at me going right over her hair again. And of course, I've used like a yellow there, so now she's got green on the side of her head. I can't have nice things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Up against the black line. Again. And scribbly, scribble, 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 scribble. How's that? Mmm. Okay, this guy is going to be a little bit lighter than the other one. And when I say a little bit, I mean like a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, all right. So that was the left side with the, oh gosh, that was the left side with the light color as a blender. And just cleaning off my actual blending pencil. So, oh, look at that fluffy bits. Um, you know what? I'm going to use this one because this has only got minutes left of its life and I want to just wear it down um, and it's also got a nice sharp edge that's really going to get in there and smash those clouds alright oh leaf blower guy outside is getting closer but next door kids are still asleep screen doesn't look like you can see much difference and you know to be honest I can't really see a great deal of difference here with my eyeballs either. So I guess in the end that would be up to you. If you've got a, you've got a really light blue or a white that you don't use a great deal, uh, get in there and, and do your burnishing, your blending, your buffing whatever you want to call it. Do that with the light pencil this little guy. What a trooper. This is my very first blender that I got last Christmas. That was when I first got my Prismas. Okay. Pretty happy with that. <laughs> I lie. I'm never happy with anything that I do. Except sometimes. But, you know. I'm a whiny cow, so I'm always going to find something wrong with what I've done. Next thing is the same as what I did with the sand down here. I'm just going to, I don't want the black lines in. So I'm just going to go with the Posca. And again, oh, there we go. Look at that coming out nicer this time. I'm just going to dab it. I'm going to go across the whole thing and dab the Posca on the lines. But I'm going to try not to just do it in one straight line of dots. Otherwise, it's going to look weird as... Alright, so you still want to get you still want to get that nice rounded fluffy edge on the clouds, but I find with the Posca you can't really draw it in. So oh let's see, hang on. Where's my other bit? I might just give that a sometimes it'll let you draw, sometimes it's just Ficklest, is that a word? The most fickle of pens. That's actually working. A little bit. I can still see the lines. You can't really see them on the screen though, so I guess that's what counts, huh? Alright, around there. Try and get this bit done quickly. You could always fast forward if you like because I'm just going to. Um, I'm just going to go over all those lines and cover them up because they bug the crap out of me. Alrighty. Oh, dude, seriously, there are not that many leaves outside. You guys know that if you click like um, um, somewhere down here in the bottom corner of the, the, the YouTube settings business, you can make the video run faster too. I don't know 
how many years I've been using YouTube for, and I just discovered that a few months ago. I was watching some of those, uh, you know, those people do, like those really sick artists do those online tutorial things and put them in fast forward. I was like, okay, but I want to see how you did it. You slow it down and it still turns out really choppy, so maybe it's so that you can't copy the techniques, I don't know. Uh, one day when I work out how to use YouTube, I might make this thing go faster, but for now you can press the fast forward button. Any old time, please. Now, is half of that done? You see the difference now, a little bit more cartoony. A bit less cartoony. I'm just going to let that other side dry because I can go back over that again. Leaf blower man is getting closer and closer. He's actually right outside under my balcony at the moment. And I don't know what he's blowing out there because it's pine trees and the soil is like solid clay. That's with my doors and windows shut. Alright, one more cloud to go. I think I've missed a few spots there. But I'm going to get them on the second go through. So this, this layer is just solely to cover up the black lines. Pascal might not be as dead as I thought he was. I might have just needed a bit of time to have the ink trickle down. Okay, so that's all the white lines covered up. Now, we don't want the... Oh, seriously, leaf blower guy, go away. We don't want the, um, the, the white edge on the cloud, we don't want it to look like a frill, like a, like a stuck on thing, because at the moment, to me, it's also starting to look a bit Brussels sprouty. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing again. But this time I'm going to just... Oh, you can't see that because of the way I'm holding my hand. Sorry. I'm just going to do like a few layers of dots inwards and then tap on them a bit. And that will, that will blend them out a bit really like to actually color with this thing but I don't want it to I want it to dry like it did on that other pirate picture and wreck it it's okay all right back in there oh there he goes did you hear that oh no here he comes again <laughs> See, now this is why I decided to call this lazy cow colouring because I said I was just going to do dots, but I totally lied because, like, I'm sick to death of doing dots now, so I'm just going to scribble and blend and seriously hope that that works. And it seems to be so far, but you know, the awesome thing about colouring stuff like this is that. You can't stuff anything up. I mean, you can look at something and think, well, that's the biggest pile of shit I've ever seen, but you can go back with all these other things like this little guy and the Poscas and the, the erasers and, you know, a million and one other little things you can get. You can fix anything. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't because it's just not true. Uh, 
Okay, uh, this part down here, I want it actually quite pale because I don't know what the hell it is to be honest. There's just a cloud bank coming in. How's that going? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit stripier than I'd like. I might. Let's have a look at that. Not happy with this one here. So, just gonna. Nah. Still not happy with it. Thank you. Man. School holidays, it's not peaceful. Just out the other side of my place, there's a, uh, a high school. So if I take a day off work, it's like being at work all over again. Screaming kids and bells and loudspeaker announcements. And it's almost not worth it. Okay, this one over here is a bit solid as well. So I'm just gonna scribble that Posca and smudge it all in. My fingers, um, uh, like that's really gross and it's gonna take some scrubbing to get off but hey you know it's like when you're a kid if your kids come inside covered in mud and filth and dirt you know they've had a good time same with this um, all right I think yeah that's, it. that's different I like how they're always different because if you have a look at this one this is the one I did this morning you can see the clouds are much more cartoony scoopy you know, like like sort of scalloped edges. These ones are much rougher. And I don't know if you can see that, but I can actually see the dots that I put along the edge of that one. So I might just grab my trusty Luma Color. I may have mentioned once or twice, I love this guy. Here's the one thing I would say if you haven't got all this other stuff. Get yourself this little guy and Poskas, but this guy and Poskas. All right, that's really dark over there, isn't it? But I've covered up the black lines. I think it's just because of the, I think it's just the contrast between the white and that electric blue that I put down for the sky. Yeah, I th and I think what I can see up close here, I think these clouds have turned out a little different because I went much dottier along the edges all right now this little guy uh, the luma color I think what he's gonna do is just tone this part down up here because it's a little bit grayer than I'd like yep and right there is a little bit so I'm just I'm actually just looking at this on the screen on the computer screen rather than the um, the paper because some things are just not showing up on the paper. All right, there's a little bit of dark there that's too dark for the rest of it. So mush some of him over the top. And I reckon maybe just there too. Mm, a bit more. Okay. I think that's it. What do you reckon? See so if I move that up a bit, you can see the whole thing. Ooh, that way. All right, that whole spatial thing, too much for me. You can also go this way a little bit. All right, so sand, three colors and a Posca and a Luma color. Water, three colors and a Posca and a Luma color. Sorry guys. And the sky, three colors and a Posca and a Luma color. Um, that's it for today. And just looking at her on the screen, I'm square boobs now, flat boob. We're gonna fix that tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow what I might do, what's tomorrow? Friday. Um, gosh, it's getting close to Christmas, isn't it? And I have to finish shopping. Okay. Tomorrow I might do the clothes. I'll do the clothes. I'm going to make myself do the clothes because you have no idea how much I don't love doing these stripy, detail-y things. I don't dislike it, I just don't love it because, ugh, patience, seriously, like, look how skinny they are. I might even use, um, what do you call it, some of those fine liners, or 
I have a feeling that this is going to end up being done with my gold Posca because I do love a little bit of gold like a, it's almost like a filigree isn't it over the top of that and I really want to do that octopus love the octopus we're going to make some beads in her hair as well um, turn her hair into orange we're going to use some pumpkin orange and some sienna brown to do that I haven't decided on her eyes yet they're either going to be green or brown don't know anyway that's it for today so I hope that that was a little bit helpful for you any questions find me on the Jasmine group or um, send me a PM through Facebook I'm more than happy for that or a message here on the YouTubes um, yeah enjoy um, I hope you've found something useful out of all of this and uh, I'll see you tomorrow possibly uh, no promises to do the rest of her clothes okay thanks guys bye